Hello, I'm Colin, and I've got a different type of video today. A couple years ago, when I was still an SC, working major accounts here in the Northwest, I was introduced to Astra. We went through the uh, acquisition. I was put on this subgroup of folks that got accelerated enablement with the intention of us being able to help those around us. Well, we brought the entire field up to speed on the solution. As I went through that enablement, I had to learn new terms. And when everything was done, I realized that it would have been easier for me, at least in the way that I learn, if those t new terms had been presented in the context of how they fit into building a blueprint. A thing that Abstra refers to that acts as a scaffolding for a fabric that you then deploy. A lot of this is covered in my Abstra video series. So this is sort of uh, adjacent to that. Why this video is different is that I put together a slide deck that showed the context of those terms within an Astra Blueprint. And I used that for both myself to help my customers and then uh, later on recorded some voiceover to an animation of that slide that was distributed internally. Somebody reached out today and said that that video was helpful. And I was like, great, that's why I do this. I try to be helpful. And then they asked me why it wasn't on my YouTube channel. And I didn't have a good answer because there's nothing in that video that is proprietary or internal only. So without further ado, here's that video. Enjoy. Hello, my name is Colin Doyle. I'm an enterprise architect at Juniper Networks. And today I'm going to take you through some terminology used by our data center intent based networking solution, Abstra. There is a tendency for folks to hear new terminology in the networking space and roll their eyes and think to themselves, not more stuff. I certainly felt that way the first time I started learning Abstra. Once I understood what Abstra is, I viewed those new terms not as complexity, but as a cheat code so that I didn't have to know everything about EVP and VXLAN to build and operate a data center fabric. We often describe Abstra as an intent-based networking solution. So to begin, let's start at the end, the intent. Here we have a basic fabric topology. There are a couple of racks with leaf switches and connected hosts, uplinks to a pair of spines, and another pair of uplinks to a non-fabric router with connectivity to the rest of the network. Note that this topology does not require an expert understanding of how a data center fabric works. This is basic speeds and feeds. How many hosts, how many uplinks to leaves and at what speeds, how many links up to the spine, what is your oversubscription ratio? These aren't fabric questions, they're data center questions. So how do we get you to this fabric topology with Abstra? It starts with those speeds and feeds and what we call logical devices. Logical devices are the first abstraction layer that Abstra implements. They are essentially panels that group together a common set of device form factors like ports, speeds, and roles. This is done agnostic of the underlying hardware. It is simply meant as a placeholder to identify within a rack how many interfaces will be in use and how those interfaces will be used. Rack types spare you the hassle of having to design and build every single rack in a data center when 90% of the racks use the same leaf hardware providing the same link speeds to hosts, uplink speeds to the spine, so on and so forth. Templates define the complete data center topology. Which rack types will be used and how many of each? Which logical devices will be used for the spines and how? What sort of fabric we deploy? And, and let's stop there for just a moment because now we have our first EVP and VXLAN terminology. What was all this talk about abstraction, right? <laughs> well, don't worry. Uh, while collapsed core, three-stage and five-stage CLO are fabric terms, they refer only to topology design elements. A three and five-stage CLO represent your standard leaf spine relationship. And with a five-stage, there is a super spine that can connect multiple pods together. And collapse simply refers to a fabric where every device can function as a fabric gateway. We complete our template with some basic policies that will define the default values and behavior for the fabric Abstra deploys. We see some additional fabric terminology here, but again, this is just a networking exercise. For most folks, you're going to be using the same selections. 
using unique autonomous system numbers, using a default route for import versus pulling in all of the prefixes from your core, using an eVPN control plane instead of statically configuring every single VXLAN gateway, dual stack. These are all network questions that do not require an expert knowledge of eVPN VXLAN to answer. Once our template is complete, it is used to seed our data center blueprint. A blueprint represents a fully configured and operational data center fabric. To finish our blueprint, we need to combine our topology with configuration resources and our network connectivity intent. First, we need to tell Appstra what switches we'll be using. We do this with device profiles. These are the hardware elements, and they define the vendor, model, and software version of supported hardware within Appstra. Next, we map the interfaces on those switches to our logical devices. If you find yourself wondering why this step isn't a part of defining a logical device, remember that Appstra is multi-vendor. For that statement to have any meaning, Appstra must be able to define a physical topology that is decoupled from specific vendor hardware. If you have a logical device that defines 30 ports of SFP28 and four ports of QSFP28, how many different Juniper switch models can provide that combination? How about Cisco, Arista? So long as the hardware and code is supported by Appster, the vendor doesn't matter, just the capability. That's multi-vendor. That is intent-based networking. At this moment, we have a blueprint that defines all of the racks in our data center, the network hardware in those racks, the links used by the network hardware to interconnect the hosts, the uplinks to the spines, and uplinks to external routers. We also have mapped the physical hardware we plan to deploy to those racks. What's left now is to provide network information for Appster to use while building out the underlay and overlay on our hardware. Resource pools spare you the tedium of needing to discreetly define what could be hundreds of IP addresses, VXLAN network identifiers, and autonomous system numbers. And finally, we have managed devices, which is any fabric hardware device that has the Appster agent configured and deployed. Uniquely identified by their hardware address, managed devices are assigned to specific racks tying the complete DC fabric topology together. Something to note right here, outside of having managed devices, you can build the rest of this blueprint without any physical hardware at all. There's nothing to constrain you from designing a complete data center fabric in the absence of hardware. And certainly with hardware lead times being what they are, this can be of great benefit to an architecture team looking to get ahead of the ball so that they're ready when their hardware arrives. Once your blueprint is created, you have a DC fabric. The next step is configuring layer two and layer three elements within that blueprint. We know where and how everything connects for the fabric, but we still need to deal specifically with the hosts. We need to define what VLANs go where. How are we going to connect to the rest of the network over the physical links we've already defined? Are we going to be using OSPF, BGP, static routes? Are we going to have layer three gateways in the fabric or outside of the fabric? You notice anything about this list? This is all just everyday network stuff. Again, the value here is that you do not need to be an expert in fabrics to deploy a fabric. All you need to do is know your intent. Ultimately, eVPN VXLAN is plumbing. Data goes in one pipe, data comes out the other. What goes on in the middle, we take care of. Of course, we have videos, guides, and labs that can take you through all of this, including the Blueprint network configuration that is out of the scope of this discussion. My goal today was to help you get comfortable with some of the basic abstra terminology and to show you that new terms don't mean complexity when you're working with an intent-based networking solution. Hopefully I've been successful in that effort. Thank you so much for watching through and have a great day.